He didn't die of old age either. He was poisoned, stabbed, shot, hung, stretched, disemboweled, drawn, and quartered. Here's your look at the new Diamond Slut Ghostbusters Series 8. This is Slime Blower Ray Stans. Five years after saving the world from an incursion by Goza the Gozerian, the Ghostbusters have fallen on hard times, sued for property damage, and barred from investigating the supernatural. The four heroes have gone their separate ways and are widely believed to be frauds. Ray runs an occult bookshop and earns extra money by doing parties with Winston, but the discovery of a pink river of slime under the city causes the Ghostbusters to resume investigations. All signs point to another apocalyptic event, but the same goo that threatens the city could actually be the substance that helps save it. The Ghostbusters 7-inch action figure line is based on the 1989 feature film Ghostbusters 2 and features multiple points of articulation. It also includes accessories and a piece of a larger diorama. Collect all 15 figures in series 6 to 10 to build the front of the Ghostbusters firehouse. The figures were individually sculpted by Gentle Giant Studios. The first thing we'll do for Slime Blower Ray is to measure him off. Now, I could measure it to the top of his head, but then I think to myself, well, he's going to also be sporting that tank of slime behind him. That will certainly determine how tall the figure is when you are putting on its shelf. So I'm going to instead measure to the top of the slime canister right at the very top there. So that puts the figure past seven inches in height and instead actually puts him closer to being about eight inches tall, about 8.1 inches in height. Switching that over to centimeters, you're looking at the figure standing 20.6 centimeters tall. And again, keep in mind I measured to the top of the tank and not to the top of Ray's head. As I just happened to have we're back, Ray, as something that was just sitting to the side of my desk. Here's a comparison between the two figures. Now, if I put the figures side by side, back to back it does look like they are the same height however it does look like their faces are different and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second but i guess the first thing we'll do is we'll have a look at all the accessories that come included with the figure and then from there we'll do a whole bunch of different different uh, comparisons and stuff like that I suppose the first thing we'll do is have a look at the build a piece that comes included with Ray. And even though I'm not unfortunately building this, I can sort of show you what, at least what I have for the time being. Part of me feels like regret that I wish I could have actually gone and finished the course, ran the course and actually built this full firehouse. But then again, I'm reminded quickly when I look around my entire house, I just don't have a lot of space to accommodate these huge display pieces. As impressive as they are, and by no means do I diminish Diamond Select's outings by giving us these spectacular sights. I just don't have the space for it. A shared problem that I think many collectors face, especially when you are collecting so many things like I do, I just don't have a space, for example, as big of, for a firehouse. But I'm going to move him just to the side for, this, for the one time being. And I just want to bring the camera back a little bit. What I am going to do is I'm going to bring in some of the pieces that uh, we've kind of looked at over the course of time. And here is kind of like, well, this is going to be where the window is going to be for the door. The other piece that we have gotten since then, of course, is this piece up at the top here. Now this, obviously, I'm not going to be able to display all of this. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of make shift. Hopefully it won't knock over again. There we go. I'll probably have to hold it. There is just Ray on his own. There is the top of the firehouse. Now this would drop down, I believe, another secondary piece below that. This is pretty tall just on its own. If I can hold it and not hopefully knock anything else over. Here's the window piece. Remember the window piece that came with Ray? That's going to go right there. 
kind of gives you a perspective of how big this is. And again, there's a lot that's missing here. This has to still carry over by about, well, double this across. And then another piece that's gonna go below that. This is just two pieces. Hopefully that gives you some perspective as to how big the firehouse would be when all of this is all finished and said and done. Moving forward with the review, let's have a look at some of the accessories that come included with slime below array. I almost dropped it. Ooh, that could have been a catastrophe. We got ourselves the little container of slime, little sample jar of slime. And no, oh, even though the top of the lid is not removable, it's molded shut. It's a nice little additional piece. Making use again of some of the fantastic stuff that Diamond Select release. I can't stress this enough. Diamond Select are the kings when it comes to accessory pieces and diorama pieces. And the reason why I say that is even though we don't technically have a desk for Ray, we don't technically have a desk for uh, you know any of the Ghostbuster figures. You could certainly make use of uh, many of the desks that have come included with other figures like Gotham figures or say for example uh, the X Files figures. I think also, I think Mulder came with a desk. You can make use of this desk for putting the slime and all the other trinkets that the Ghostbusters come included with. So many, many of the times, the mix and match capabilities that Diamond Select possess with a lot of their figure releases inherit themselves then to other figures that you want to be displaying with. So I might actually go into the tickle trunk of all my accessories and things that I've collected over the years, see if maybe I can find myself a suitable enough desk from Diamond Select that I can put all this stuff onto. But in the meantime, a nice little canister, clear canister, containing the pink ooze inside. Put that aside. Of course, one other thing that comes included with this ray is the walkie-talkie. We have really covered this at suppose at some nausea. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time discussing a black molded walkie talkie. It's nicely detailed. And like with the other Ghostbuster figures, it all goes to the same place. The little front pouch, although much more heavily adorned here on Ray, but it sits right in the front pouch there. Put him right down to the side. He also comes with a series of interchangeable hands, all of which are gloved hands. This is a figure that doesn't actually have bare hands. All the figures, four hands, four hands total, are all gloved, all of them. Comes with two parts. This part would go over top of the sleeve, and then of course you've got the hand that would hold whatever accessories you wanna have him holding. Primarily it would be the nozzle of the, the slime blower. So you get two of those currently on their own, and then you get two that are attached to the sockets. Simple math would tell you that's four, four gloves. Then we move on to the interesting things. Of course, with being slime blowing, you need some slime to blow. Here we have the slime contraption, a little extra piece that can go attached to the nozzle portion of the slime blower. Winston, who unfortunately is away today. I can't do a comparison with him and Ray in their respected outfits, but the outfits are pretty much identical to one another, except for the, like the neck up, which would be different from the characters. But the slime blowing slime effect was exactly the same. Sort of looks like stretched out original bubble gum. Maybe bazooka bubble gum or hubba bubba. Do either of those still exist? Either way, the stretching out of the slime is a nice little projection that could be added to the nozzle portion. And likely when it comes to displaying the figures, I'm probably going to do that. Or I might likely display as an idea that just popped into my mind. I might actually even have the scene in which Winston and Ray kind of tap, slap their two uh, slime blowing wands together just before they're ready to hose down Lady Liberty with the good slime. Either way though, I'll show you how this kind of comes about. The little nozzle here, the small silver nozzle, has a little attached port, a little open port there via a hole, and then this slides right into place. I haven't really tried it both ways. I would imagine when you're blowing the slime, the slime would be blowing upward as it's being projected out. Let's see here, I'm just gonna pull this out. There we go. See if I can project it. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's a perfect shape either way. I guess it, again, depends on which angle you wanna shoot it. You can shoot it this way. I kinda like it having it going up because I feel like there's force behind the slime. It's projecting at it. It's such an extreme force that the slime is gonna be blowing upward. But again, you can go either way if you want. And that's how it looks like. Go ahead and remove that. And a rather interesting accessory, not one of which I was expecting when I first heard that we were gonna be getting ourselves a slime blowing ray, 
is we get the possessed Vigo Ray. Vigo Ray. Near the end of the film, when of course they're going to confront Vigo, Vigo possesses Ray, who has already sort of taken to a wandering glare at the painting and then got lost amongst the painting. Vigo eventually comes back to claim Ray as a possessed version of himself. Now, what's neat about that is, even though I wouldn't necessarily display it with Vigo, because personally I would think it makes more sense displaying it with Ray, obviously that's for the scene itself, I suppose you could do it as a slightly, if you wanted to add this also to Vigo, when uh, they're finally like kind of hosing him down, you could probably mix it and match it out and use this head sculpt instead. Either way, thrilled as punch for the fact that Diamond Select would include both options. A regular ray head, which as I'm popping the head out, there goes the ball joint. I assumed that was going to be the problem. A very small, yet very large, very small uh, stem, but very large ball joint on the end. Either way, we'll put the head sculpt in place there. I guess the head sculpt really isn't intended for ray here. I guess it's really more intended for Vigo. But uh, there's the sort of possessed Ray head sculpt. There's not really a... Too, it's not the easiest thing to even get in there either. I'll see if I can find my Vigo. And we'll try it on top of Vigo's head. But in the meantime, there is the fantastic, neat-looking head sculpt that they incorporated for Ray here. Again, if you wanted to use it for this head sculpt for Ray, or if you wanted to use it for Vigo. I pause the video and quickly grab my Vigo for my collection, and there's the Vigo also released from Diamond Select. And once again, we can go back to the head sculpt that comes included with Ray. Now, in this scene, Ray is eventually possessed by Vigo, but up to that point, Vigo starts getting distorted and creates, again, this head sculpt, which, once again, we can pull off. Let's hope we fare a little bit better with the ball joint here. Ah, uh, yes, that's much better. We can pop the head in place. Luckily, to Vigo's benefit, even though it's, oh, it's so difficult to get the ball joint on there, to Vigo's benefit, even though eventually I will struggle to get the head sculpt in place, we'll just kind of keep that in place like, well, like, like so. You can put it eventually on Vigo. It may require a little bit of heating of the socket to get that in place, but to his benefit at least, he has a bigger range. I know, it, it, looks, it looks silly. The head sculpt should actually be further down there. He has a little bit more clearance, luckily, because the hair doesn't have to fight against the back of the slime blower tank. But you can either have it for Vigo or you can have it for Ray. I just think it's a little bit more trickier to get it onto Ray because, once again, we put Vigo right there. Put it in Ray, I mean, you're going to have the problem of the pillow, the back cushion there. I guess you could kind of pry this back a little bit to get the head sculpt in place. Again, you can use either or, the head sculpt for either Vigo or Ray. You know, actually, as I'm doing the comparisons here and I'm looking at the two figures, I don't know if it's just for the fact that Ray's head looks so much bigger, but it seems to have now dwarfed Vigo. Vigo seems a little smaller as a result of it, which is a bit of a shame because Vigo really should be towering over all the Ghostbusters. He does seem a little small as a result of it. It's okay, buddy. At least you're a lot better than the one that we got from Mattel, which looked terrible. Terrible. By the way, I've done a full review of Vigo if you'd like to check that out. I'm going to move him out of the way because I do also want to do one other comparison. I'm going to grab, once again, Slime Blower Ray. I talked a little bit about this at the beginning of this review, but there are two different rays, two from what seems to be two different apparent head sculpts. The chin seems so much different on this ray. This is, I guess, a brand new head sculpt that they've made use of for a ray. I didn't mind necessarily this one. Maybe the shading could have been tweaked a little bit, but it does seem like the new Slime Blower Ray exhibits a slightly different head sculpt. It is a little bit different than the one that we got before. At least you can see from the chin and standpoint, from the, that standpoint, that it does look different. It also looks like he's got a longer head. This one does look better. I mean, it does make his head look very, very big, but I guess it's a little bit more realistic than the one that we got right here. My other ray for the original outfit is somewhere in storage. I'm going to see if I can try to find it. In the meantime, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves here 
talk a little bit about Ray in the slime blower outfit, which now, of course, makes use of the more traditional beige Ghostbuster outfit. Even though the Ghostbusters 2 patch now is present on this sleeve versus the original Ghostbusters would have Ghostbusters 1 patch. One thing also now apparent is the giant tank, big honking tank on the back of Ray's back. It's done very nicely. I didn't have any problems with the one that came also with Winston. A nice combination with the larger tank being in a gray, the side smaller compression tanks, I guess. Is this the slime here and then this is the air compression tanks? I'm not really sure. I don't, I'm not a scientist after all, but uh, you got some nice stickering that's been added to the sides as well as the front there. I think this is actually printed on rather than stickered. It almost even looks like there's a floppy drive there on the side. I can only imagine the, some, some of the stuff that they just threw together to produce what looked to be legitimate uh, tools of the trade in the Ghostbuster films. I do have one problem with the slime blower. I'm trying to remember if I mentioned this when we had a look at Winston, but I have a real problem with the way that this is connected. Um, it doesn't fit well. I mean, when you are bringing it around, obviously it works better on one way than the other. So being that the this tube right here connects to this part of the nozzle, yet more likely better suited by having the slime blower facing this way. If you bring it around to the opposite way, now all of a sudden you're fighting, you're competing with the fact that you're cutting and reducing the length of the cord every single time you move it around the figure. So by the time it does get around to this side of Ray, which I think is actually the right side in the film, uh, it's too, it's not tight enough, or it's too tight. It's not relaxed enough. So when it comes to displaying the figure, you may actually want to bring it around and display it on the side that it's connected on this side of the pack. It just is easier. You have a little bit more wiggle room to work. And as you can see, it fits much easier around to this side of Ray than it does on the opposite side, which I'd have to go back and again, check the film. I, I think it, I think in the film, it's the opposite way. It's on the opposite side. I feel like he's pointing the slime blower this way. Again, I would have to go back and just double check that. Uh, one thing, though, I, I wanted to talk about with the slime blower was it does seem like it's small. Maybe I mentioned that when I did the review of Winston, but it seems like it's smaller than it is in the film. I've just taken his hand off for the time being, by the way, as well. If anyone was keeping tabs on what I was doing, I was just trying to replace it to a hand that I felt was a better suit for holding the slime blower. So... What it is, is the handle here, this first of all would be going up onto his shoulder, which does, again, add some problems when it comes to using it in his hand, because now you're pulling down on the shoulder strap. So when it comes to displaying the figure, I'll probably just take it off of his shoulder, just so I could display it in his hand. It is in theory possible that you can have him holding the slime blower in a way that he's holding it in the film. This does involve a whole lot of bending and stretching of the arms beyond the point that you think is a safe bet and to get it over top of the handle. Now, the problem is with this, and the reason why I said that this might be too small for the figure, I feel like the handle, the handle should be better suited to hold the hand. I know usually it's the other way around. The handle should be better suited to, you know, well, you know what I mean. But it does seem like this handle, this part right here, is too small for Ray's actual hand. So when you are putting it into his hand, you're not actually putting the whole thing in. You're sort of just kind of fighting it in there. And I don't feel like I'm getting it in 100, 1,000%. I guess ultimately, I can get most of it in. And then you've got Ray holding his his slime blower. What's ironic enough is when I'm looking at this right now, I know at the beginning of this review, I flipped it around the other way, believing again that it was more accurate to the film, it did cause a lot more trouble when it came to this being tight, this hose being tight. It makes more sense to have it this, say, this way around. The only thing I don't like about the figure, generally I am pretty happy with the figure, but like the handle, like I said, is a little, it does feel small. Maybe it isn't, but it does feel small when I'm looking at the figure. The other problem I have with it is the new head sculpt that they've given Ray, if it is, in fact, an actual new head sculpt, does make the figure's head look too big for the rest of his body. Once again, if we compare it to We're Back Ray, 
I would be willing to bet that the figure's bodies are the same, even though the shoulders on we're back race seems higher. Let's see if I can bring this up a little bit. I can't believe that the the figures, one figure, the slime blower ray, is a shorter figure. I feel like the body is the same. So then when we're looking at the two figures, clearly one has a bigger head sculpt than the other. I hope most people can see that. It's a diff I don't know if it is a brand new head sculpt. It seems as if it certainly is a brand new head sculpt, but it's quite obvious that the head sculpt on this one is so big, almost to the point where I feel like it's too big for his body versus this one I think was an accurate read proportionally for the rest of his body, if that makes any sense. Go ahead and move Ray off once again. And uh, once again, we'll just kind of go through all the other extra stuff that's on this figure because this one has a lot more going for it than the regular Ghostbusters outfit Ray. He's got the front sort of life, it's not quite a life jacket, but it's kind of a harnessed jacket that is attached to the back of the tank. He's got a lot of extra kind of support uh, strappings here that he attaches into the front just to kind of keep you can only imagine in the movie this probably was not super light but I can't imagine it was a very heavy tank for them to carry around maybe uh, might be 20 pounds for them to possibly carry around if it was in real life and that was full of full of slime I could only imagine how heavy this thing would actually be all the more reasoning why they would have had the strappings there on the front speaking of strappings he's got the clear tube which is connected to the front the front hosing there which is attached to his thigh the tucked in boots once again nice job on the laces I'm, I'm i'm happy with the figure something seems off on the figure and i kind of i'm stopping hesitantly throughout the course of this review and i'm thinking to myself what seems off on the figure he seems shorter but again i think most of the shortness is not so much the figure but it's maybe the fact that the head sculpt seems a little bit bigger than it normally should be I keep wanting to also bring the head sculpt up a little bit anyways we'll look through his posability and then we'll kind of wrap this review up because i know you guys certainly have places you need to go people you need to see the head will rotate all the way around the head also hinges up and down angles back and forth uh, the shoulders hinge out Completely free, there's nothing obstructing the arms from moving outward. You can move the arms back and forth. Forward and back, I should say. Bend at the elbow. The elbow also allows the forearm to rotate periodically as I'm doing this. You might see that the hands pop out. You can just pop those back into place. Same same idea on the other side of the arm there. The other side of the body on the opposing arm. He's got an upper torso ball joint. He's got a lower, lower, lower torso swivel. Um, sometimes though, this one part of his, I don't even really know what specifically that is, but the little yellow plastic, uh, container that's on the side of his belt. Sometimes you gotta be careful when you are rotating it. You're not going to clip that and you're not going to clip the, the walkie talkie that's there as well. Legs split. You have a forward and back on the legs, a swivel cut on the thigh, a little bit stiffer on this leg. Let's try on this leg here. That's ah, just a little stiff. There we go. Double hinge on the knee. There's one. There's two. And then for feet, if feet angle or tilt back and forth, the boots don't necessarily turn. However, you do get the ankle pivot happening there on Ray. If only, if only, if only, I could have found my Winston Zedmore, who also had the slime blower attached to him. I would really love to do a comparison between those two figures. I'll see if I can find that figure in the meantime. Um, I'm very happy with Ray. Well, mostly happy with Ray. I know for me to say very happy with this with this Ray would probably lead to many comments saying, well, you, you were very critical of the figure. Don't get me wrong. I was critical, I will admit that, of the figure itself. I've always been a big fan of the slime blowing outfit that Ghostbusters have in Ghostbusters 2. And even though it's only Winston and Ray that sported in the film, it's certainly one of the standout cool points of this sequel, in which I thought the sequel as a, as a whole was a really good follow up to the original Ghostbusters. Looking at this figure, it's constructed well. It's just as good as it, all the other Ghostbuster figures that we've gotten from Diamond Select. And yet something seems off on the figure. The slime blower, eventually, when figuring out it should be going on this side, which I do feel like, again, it's supposed to go on the opposite side. I'd have to go back and double-check the film. 
the only thing that I do want to mention is I feel like the head sculpt is way too big. Could be maybe a little bit smaller. If it is making use of a hand, brand new head sculpt, which I might add is a good likeness of Ray, probably of the Ghostbuster figures the Diamond Select have produced, Ray is my favorite from a likeness standpoint. And I think if this is a new head sculpt, it does definitely capture the likeness of Dan Aykroyd. But I feel like proportionately, the head sculpt might be throwing off the rest of the figure. The rest of the figure, by contrast to the now what seems to be larger head, is making the rest of the figure seem slightly shorter, which I know is not the case. Previous to shooting the final looks here for this slime blower ray, I went back and watched the scene again in which they're dousing Lady Liberty with the good slime. Sure enough, they're holding the slime blowing nozzles the opposite way, the opposite way to what I've got it right now. Which does make sense because if you look at the nozzle, there's a side handle to it and then there's that top handle. The top handle I've ab I'm able to get Ray to properly hold. But then the other one just sits idly by. It should actually be facing the other way. But the problem is, if you have it facing the other way, the roping, the cording that comes out from the nozzle becomes too tight and you have to stretch it to fit it across the front of the figure. This is the most comfortable way to display it with slime blowing ray. But the problem is, again, it's just facing the wrong way. That's a small thing. That's not a deal breaker. It's a, again a nice looking figure. The head does seem proportionate a little bit too big but I did mention that in this review and I don't want to talk too much heavily saturate this review at least in final looks we're talking about the size of Ray's head. Dan Aykroyd has a very large head to start off with. I'm sure he doesn't want me drawing a whole lot of attention to it so I'm just gonna say in closing thoughts, closing opinions, and closing of this review Slime Blower Ray is a nice addition to your existing Ghostbusters collection. The nozzle does become a bit of a complicated matter with him to properly hold it, but as you can see, I did get it finally held in his hand, even though that extra handle is just sitting just on its own. Nothing's really touching it right now. Uh, a good looking head sculpt, like I said, a little bit big. Won't talk too much more about that. Either way, guys, if you are interested in picking up Slime Blower Ray, much like all the other Ghostbuster figures that we've looked at recently on this channel, you should be now able to find these at your local comic book store. I think, in fact, Wave 8 is the most recent wave, and therefore the comic book store should still hopefully have these in stock if you're interested in adding these to your existing collection. Today we were having a look at the Diamond Select Ghostbusters film Ghostbuster figures. This was Series 8, and this was Slime Blower Ray with a really large head. Okay, fine, I said it one last time. I'm not going to say it anymore. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Diamond Select Ghostbuster reviews, there's a whole playlist just for that. There you go. You can watch it your viewing pleasure. Speaking of viewing pleasure, if you want to check out more from these videos, what's this guy's churning out every single day, seems every single day I'm putting new content onto this channel, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. That will, for the most part, guarantee that when new videos are coming onto this channel, you'll never miss out. And if you're longtime viewers of this channel, thank you for that and your continued support, make sure you periodically swing on over to the home page. That will guarantee you that at the very least, say if there's something that you may have missed along the way, you can at least go back and just double check by the thumbnails on the main page and see if there's any videos that you may have missed out. Judging by the fact that some videos, unfortunately, are only about 600 views, there is probably a very strong chance yeah, there's a very strong chance that some of you guys are missing the content that I'm putting out there. So periodically, like I said, why not head over to the homepage and see what's all going on. More going on will be coming on to this channel soon. As, like I said, more videos are always, always going up. So stay tuned for those. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.